Be a part of the best pro wrestling podcast today by supporting the Going In Raw Patreon. You can enjoy access to the live taping of the show, exclusive merchandise, and patron-only episodes, and so much more. Support Going In Raw today. Click the link in the description. This is Charlotte, and you're watching Going In Raw. That sounds terrible. What's up? This is the most must-see WWE superstar of all time and his lovely, gorgeous wife. Marie. And you are Going In Raw. What's up? It's your girl, Sasha Banks, the legit boss, and you are watching Going In Raw. Oh, baby, I like it raw. Oh, baby, I like it raw. And you are tuned in to Going In Raw right now. How you doing? Hey, friend, old Steve here. And Larson. And welcome to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you can be listening to right here. YouTube.com forward slash Steve and Larson. And anywhere fine podcasts are available, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the little bell notify button thing next to it to make sure you're always up to date on the latest Going In Raw content. We're also available at the Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson, where we have a variety of reward tiers, which you can subscribe to and then receive said rewards. Yes, we're also at Pro Wrestling Tees at ProWrestlingTees.com slash Going in Raw. 11 designs? 12? Yeah, 11, I don't remember. 12, something like that. Um, also, starting tomorrow, July, July 6th, 6th, massive sale at Pro Wrestling Tees, mm-hmm. site-wide, I believe. Yeah. Check it out. Yeah, you can get our shirt for a discount. Yes. Um, so this is our new day night two New Japan recap. Pro Wrestling G1 special in, in the USA. No, in USA. Sorry. Not in the USA. Sorry. In, in USA, USA night two recap. Now we want to say thanks to James from Cow Chop for stopping by for uh, the night one recap. Man, that guy fit like a glove. Yep. Too bad he's also he's already got a massive career of his own. Yeah. Otherwise, we'd bring him in as a third member. Yes, absolutely. But hopefully, we'll get to do more stuff with him. Yes, I hope so. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Um, but it's just me and Larson today. No special guests. <laughs> oh man. But anyways, um, we were we were fortunate enough to attend both night one and night two of G one specials in USA. Yes. Um, had a blast oh, both yeah. nights, especially night two because for once. You were the one that got good tickets. Yeah, Remember, we, were, we were sitting in Orlando uh, the day before WrestleMania, the Saturday before, and uh, we got up, and uh, we're like, all right, we got to buy tickets. So you were charged with getting day two. Yeah. I was charged with getting day one. Correct. And you got better seats than I did. I know. I So here was my thing, and we said this in the, in the night one recap. I wasn't sure at all how... Uh, night two would be able to top night one. I really didn't see that happening. But man, uh, a combination of the fact that the the matches, with one exception, were all super quality, and our seats, which were right on the, it was second row, but um, right on the entrance ramp. Right on the entrance ramp. I know a lot of you guys who saw it could probably see good old Stephen Larson there um, during like a lot of the entrances. I got two suites from every member of Bullet Club that I wanted one from. You got one from Kenny Omega. That's right. Larson confirmed. Two, got a two-sweet from Kenny Omega. There's you no actually confirmed. two-sweeted somebody. And you There's did no it. confirmed. I, the only thing that bums me out is that we have a $200,000 Patreon rewards here that's specifically for you two-sweeting me, but you're going off and two-sweeting Kenny Omega. Has it ever occurred to you that I put the thought in your mind that I may have two-sweeted someone just to enhance storyline? Nobody believed you'd do that. I'm sure they would. You had your two sweet ready to go. I was too busy getting my two sweet from probably even cooler though. And this is our pinned tweet right now at Real Going in Raw. We both got Los, Ingo Nob- Los Ingobernables de Japón fist bumps from Naito. Yeah, and he told us to uh, Tranquilo at he one said point. Tranquilo at one point. Um, so no, it was it was an absolute blast. And yeah, having those seats totally like I think upped. The anti. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Um, the fact that, especially uh, uh, the way the arrangement around the ring was, um, uh, this this whole show isn't going to be us just talking about how awesome our seats were. I assure you. Yeah, pretty um, much. But uh, the way the the layout of the ring was, there really was only enough room in one area to do any sort of crazy high spots on the outside. Yeah, and that was right by us. <laughs> it was right next to us. It was rad. So we saw a lot of crazy stuff happen mm-hmm. right by us. Right by us. But we'll get to that in a second. We get to we got to give a lot and of. Steve uh, managed boosting. to document one of those moments. <laughs> oh, no. uh, 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 photographed. Yeah. A picture of Trent. Yeah. Trying to make his way back to the ring, yeah. which Trent himself 
uh, seem to appreciate. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so anyways, let's start with the, the very first match. All right. Uh, it was a six-man tag match. Uh, Jushin Thunder Liger. 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 Sorry, I always say Liger. I don't know why. Liger. Uh, Dave Finley and Kushida versus uh, Yoshitatsu and the Tempura Boys. So yeah. Bullet Club Hunter yes. and the Tempura Let Boys. Let me ask you something. What? Who got the most heel heat this entire show? Cody. But Yoshitatsu was yeah. up there. Yeah. He was up there. Yeah. Cody might have gotten Xbox heat, to be honest with you. Cody might have gotten, well, Cody might have gotten Roman Reigns heat. Like, you don't deserve to be here, heat. I kind of think that was more of the thing. If that is the thing, I don't know if, I don't think it's necessarily warranted, though. Well, that's a debate to have. Yes. Because I don't know that it was. I don't know that it wasn't either. So I don't know. But also, what you know, he, granted, yeah, he, you know, he got a title shot. Maybe you, one could debate whether he should have or not. Uh, regardless of that, he was healing it up. No, I know. His, look, dude, his character work has always been yeah. great. It's always been great. It's just when you're when you're in New Japan. Go ahead. Hold on. Could it be this? For the crowd that was there in night one, do you think a lot of people really wanted to see Okada Omega for the main event for the title? And since uh, we weren't getting that? No. No. Because if we had Okada Ishii, they wouldn't be crapping on Ishii. Oh, no. I know. If it was Okada... But, all, but it, it might be a little bit of three or four different things. If some, it was for some reason... Oh, well, that wouldn't happen. If some, there, there probably or could have been some segment of the crowd that thought, oh, why is Cody getting this spot? Doesn't deserve it. Boot him because of that. There are some people that might have booed Kobe, Cody because he was doing really good heel work. Mm -hmm. Boot him because of that. Maybe there were some people that were disappointed that it wasn't Kenny or or Naito fighting for yeah. the title at night. Boot him because of that. Here, I mean, here, here's one of my points that I'll make about it. Because here's my thing. I'm totally fine with Cody Rhodes. Yeah. Um, I, I really am. Um, but the two sort of knocks on him is that Okay, so his night one, we mentioned this in recap. His night one match against Okada was fantastic. Yeah. It was really, really damn good. But we, it mostly really got good after Kenny came out. Yeah, it was it was really, really good storytelling. There was a really, really good plot twist there. Yes. Um, his work with Okada was great because Okada's great. Yes. I don't think Cody can carry that match. He had a match against Michael Elgin, who had a fantastic match against uh, Kenny Omega during this special. Um and it was two guys, I think maybe who can't. I'm actually, I'm a bigger fan of Mike Elgin than I am Cody Rhodes um, in terms of in ring work. I just, when you're in New Japan, so many of the guys there, I mean, you know, we talk about their top four, they have like a top 10. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So many of their guys are fantastic. Mm hmm. And Cody's not there yet. Not not in terms of in ring, in -ring work. Right, no. right. In Which terms is, of character work, he's yeah, and spectacular. It, totally, absolutely. But, and then my second point, which is a silly one, but I'm going to make it anyways. And it, it was it was magnified by the Tanahashi Billy Gun match. When you're New Japan and you're presenting a product to the United States, Kenny Omega was your biggest star. You know, he was treated like your biggest star. Although Okada got a mass, and Naito yes. got yes. the guys who should have gotten huge pops. Yes. So much of the audience you're trying to get from the WWE, maybe. Mm -hmm are people who know Cody Rhodes as Stardust, as the guy who left and went to the indie scene. So do you want to put a mic or put put a, a magnifying glass on the fact that a WWE in some respects, and I don't think I don't think this is true, but perception kind of matters, a WWE washout, a guy who couldn't get to the top in WWE is now at the top of your promotion. It's like the joke that you and I have about fun wrestling in WGPW when we did the superstar trade off. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. That all my top of the card guys were or mid card guys in my or thing. instantly buried. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, you know, a guy washed out of WWE again. Perception, not my opinion. Washed out of the WWE, climbs his way to the top of the indies, and then New Japan kind of feels like it's not at the level because you know what I mean. I agree with that, especially with the Billy Gunn scenario. Well, that was times a hundred. Yeah, that was with times Cody. 100. I mean, if if he had left WWE six months ago. And found himself in that position, yeah. But it's been what a year and a half. Yeah, I guess. And it hasn't been like he he's just been sitting around not doing anything. He's yeah. been busting his tail. He's been busting his tail. He's very prolific. It's just who has said, man? Have you seen the match? It's it sort of goes back to the thing I talked about in the, our, the episode we just filmed. In that Cody Rhodes 
is kind of still just WWE Cody Rhodes. Yeah, to a degree. And especially if, in terms of his wrestling work. If you're going to win over the New Japan crowd, you need to step up your in-ring game. I will say this. I night 1, yes. Night 2 during the tag match. Uh granted it wasn't a, a wrestling exhibition yeah, by any stretch. Match, yeah. But it was it was it's that kind of stuff. Mhm. That Cody wasn't doing in WWE. Yeah. And it's something that highlights his character work, which is yeah. great. Yeah. And that he felt right at home in. Yeah. That kind of New Japan comedy match. And it worked really well. Yeah. He, there's obvious chemistry between him and Marty Skrull. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They would make sure. a fantastic tag team. No, absolutely. And, you know, like I said, I'm not down on Cody. Oh, Rhodes. I know. I know. We I just, just understand. I, I understand sort of the backlash. I, I kind of get it. Um, even even if I don't fully agree with it, yes, no, because I think that I I actually really really like his American Nightmare persona. Mm -hmm. I like what he was doing coming out with the dudes in the in the Point Break uh, president mask. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was cool stuff. Lighting a cigar and looked like putting it out on his own arm. I like that. That was cool. Yeah. Um, like we said, a lot of the character work, but man, so many of the people pop for the story the the in match abilities. The in-ring abilities and the storytelling in the ring. Yes, of New Japan performers, yes. Exactly. Yeah, I know. And I think Cody just, he's not, he's not there. He's not there. Yeah. So, um, so that could be some of it. But, uh, but also, you know, he, he, he did, he does play a great heel. Yeah. Give him that much. Uh, so, but the, the, the night kicked off, night two we, we kicked off. kind of got sidetracked there. Yeah, yeah. we did. Um, but, the, but this match was actually a lot of fun. Mm -hmm, yeah. Um, Liger gets a huge response. Yeah. Kushida gets a huge response. Yes. I love Finley. Yeah. Um, the finish saw all the faces putting all the, uh, I guess you would say heels, mm -hmm. um, in submission moves. And Yoshitatsu tapped out to Finley. I don't know what his submission moves call where he puts mm -hmm. the leg around the neck back yeah, here like yeah, that, yeah, stretches yeah. him that way. Yoshitatsu, in terms of like you, the original, the, the way, the why, the reason why we got on that tangent is because your original question was who got the most heel heat. Yoshitatsu was up there. Yes. <laughs> because, and I like that it, everybody's kind of on the same page with it too, in that they're like, what do you mean you're Bullet Club Hunter? None of what does that sense. even mean? It doesn't make any sense anymore. Why, and why if he, is he a Bullet Club Hunter, it, is, does he take so much from Triple H? Yeah, I know, exactly. So much of what the Bullet Club does is inspired by the click. Yeah, I don't, I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense. It's like click slash NWO. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. So I don't know what his deal is. And I like that that's kind of the reason behind his heel lead is everybody's like, why? You don't make sense. Yeah. Anyway. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, so yeah, I don't know why he still does that. I don't know either. I don't know. He's got to hold on to something, I guess. Um, but anyways, yeah, fun enough match. Moving on to uh, the second round of the United States yes, tournament. First of two semifinal matches. Kenny Omega versus Jay Lethal. Uh-huh. Jay Lethal, of course, still nursing those ribs. And Kenny went right after him. Yeah. Start the match just giving him a, a huge kick right to the rib cage. My favorite part of this match, number one, the lethal injection is such a fun move to watch. I know. He actually did hit it on Omega, who rolled out of the ring. Yep. Um, so uh, he was able to evade the pinfall. Um, my favorite part of this match is when Lethal finally got sick and tired of the rib tape. And ripped it off in frustration. Yeah. Uh, this was a really good match. Like you said, it was Kenny Omega taking advantage of Jay Lethal's rib injuries. And uh, Lethal started working over Kenny's knee, which ended up kind of coming into play in the main mm -hmm. event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is good. Kenny Omega went over, finally hitting the one-wing anchor mm -hmm. one, uh, on Jay Lethal. But a lot of a lot of nasty Kenny Omega knees to the head. We'll get to those a lot more a later, A lot too. of those coming up. Uh, um, next up, second. this was... So Man, Zack Sabre Jr. is such a joy to watch. I know. He is such a joy to watch. And this is an opinion that is starkly contrasted from when we talked about him in the Cruiserweight Classic. We didn't really, we weren't that well educated on Zack Sabre Jr. We didn't really know. But seeing him over the past year as a heel has yes. been fantastic. Yes, especially the two matches he had um, in Long Beach. Both just Fantastic, Stellar. great storytelling. So this Stellar. was the second semifinal match, which saw uh, Ishii mm -hmm. take on Saber Junior. Mm -hmm. um, we we spoke about in our day one recap the spot where uh, uh, Saber had. What, why am I forgetting who he fought day one? Uh, Juice. That's right. Juice. That, um, was a, in a, that was a good match. In yeah, in an octopus stretch, mm -hmm. and kind of did a, 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 a as Juice was reaching for the ropes, kind of did like a rings of Saturn slash octopus stretch to finally win the match, and they tried to. They did create a similar situation here where Ishii was trying to reach through the ropes and, and uh, Saber Jr. just kept stretching him and bending him in all sorts of, of, of painful-looking ways. And there's this great moment because that spot was happening right towards us. So Ishii's trying to get to the ropes. 
and Sabre Jr., you could see him assessing the situation. Yeah. Looking at Ishii's hand, looking at the ropes, you know, like seeing, okay, down to the millimeter, how far is he going to be able to go before I have to take evasive actions, essentially yeah. keep his limb away from the rope. And it was awesome. Yeah. This like second by second, you could see him processing information. That's that's the joy of his matches is that there's such a progress. You said it, there's such a progression. He does one thing, the person tries to counter it, so he has to counter. He does another thing, and it's it's a beat by beat, and you see, and you just end up, and it's funny because somebody on Twitter, I forgot who it was, but somebody on Twitter said something along the lines of, listening to the commentary for his match is hilarious because they'll say, oh my God, he's got him in a, and then, you know, like name off like some submission move. Wait, no, that's not that. It's, it's yeah, oh yeah, my yeah, God, yeah. he's just knitting a human with limbs. Yeah. It's, it's, it's absolutely a joy to watch the positions he can get. And a guy like Ishii who's like, as stout as they come, yeah. To get him in certain positions is is fantastic. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Is she ended up going over? What was the fit? Uh, he had a brain buster. Oh yeah, okay. on Saber, but Saber uh, did some damage to Ishii's arm. Mm-hmm, yeah, um, which would come into play later on. Yeah. Next, a an eight. Wait, one, two, three, ten. Five, ten person tag match: Dragon Lee, Jay White, Juice Robinson, Ooh. Titan, and uh, Volador Junior. <laughs> What? I'm remembering the, the after the finish of this match. Oh, um, versus Lij. Yeah, man, we got the, the, so again our great seats. Naito, we got the fist bump, got that in GIF form on our Twitter. Yeah, um, uh, this is a lot of fun. Lij is so supremely oh, over, yeah. and it's sad because they're the heels. They're supposed to be the heels here. I know, but you know, you got all these well-meaning, and you know, to some degree, I, I like Jay White. He went over, didn't he? Yeah, he yeah. hit he uh, hit his finisher on uh, Bushi and got the pin. That's right. Second, Two days in a row that Jay White got a pin. Um, I like Dragon Lee. Dragon Lee. Dragon great. Lee. The sequence with Dragon Lee and Takahashi. The fact that they have such a history yep. together. Yep. Uh, and then to see them continue that was fantastic. But the dude behind us was super marking out over that. I think he was following all the way back to their CMLL days. Yeah. Um, juice was juice. Um and then Titan and Volador Jr. I kind of just it's a jumble for me. I, Volador Jr. is the mix between Bret, Bret Hart, Hart and Sabu. Sabu, but he was under mask. Yeah, he took the mask off after the match. Though. I was like, I don't know who's who. Um, but anyways, lots of cool, great luchador stuff. Yeah, lots of lucha shit. A couple spots that happened right in front of us again. Mm-hmm, yeah. um, about midway through the match, there's this massive brawl that just broke yeah. out of the place where uh, Naito grabbed uh, Juice by his hair, mm-hmm. and oh, pulled him yeah. all the way up the ramp. Yeah, that's right. And then yeah. stretched him a bit up there. Yeah, my favorite part of this match uh, was afterwards. When Juice was heading back up towards the ramp, he, he got some high fives to, for the guys on the other side of the ramp, and then he looked over at us. Well, I'm standing here like looking towards the ring with my elbow probably on the guardrail. Yeah. And he, and right as I he turns towards me or us, yeah, I kind of turn too and notice that he has his hand out. Yeah. And while I'm processing it, he just kind of walks <laughs> by. <laughs> Man, yeah, right. While he's pro- while you're processing it, you process it. I'm like, I'm not like giving you my hand. That was great. We both cracked up too. I like Juice as a, uh, you know, I-, I want him to have a job. Yeah. I want him to succeed. Yeah. But it is my right as a fan to not like Juice Robinson, the character. Yeah, that's totally fine. He's grating. His voice is annoying. He's not a handsome individual. His gimmick confuses the crap out of me. I don't know what he's supposed to be. I don't like any of it. Okay. The only thing I like. and You're Uly- not obligated to give him a high five, Steve. Ulysses pointed this out. Is His theme song goes in step with his video package as he's punching somebody in the face. It's to the beat. Oh, that's pretty cool. And that is actually kind of cool. I noticed that. That's another thing that I actually got to do. Number one, oh man, there was no Portland Club all weekend. No. no, they did play it after the show, after everything had ended, while we were talking to. Fringos. Oh, it oh did come yeah, on then, but not during the actual televised event. So no. that was annoying. But I got a better feel for everybody's theme song in general. Being yes. there live, you get to hear it. Like Ishii's, I swear the beat sounds like dog, like dog barkings. Well, it starts with dog barking. Yeah, it yeah. starts with dog barkings, but then you like hear the beat, and I'm like, did they overlay some dog bark with the beat? It's great. It's thematic. And then yesterday I had Rapongi Vice's theme yeah, stuff in good my head the that's entire a, time. That's a Rocky Romero creation, I think. Yeah, I think it is too, yeah. Um, next up we had Hangman Page and the Gorillas of Destiny, uh, Bullet Club versus War Machine and Big Mike Elgin. See, when this match started, I went to go get a, some water and a pretzel. Mm-hmm. So I missed a lot of it, but I did see the finish. 
Uh, so you got the Philly. Hangman Page bit. got the. Uh, fit, yeah, the, his the finisher fit, looks he? brutal. Yeah, he kind of put some his opponent. Over, his Ray Rowe, he got kind of uh, in like an Alabama slam yeah. position, but instead of slamming him back first to the mat, he does like a pile driver. Yeah, like a back. Yeah, like yeah, a weird. Yeah, on the back it looks like it could be rough. Yeah, sort of sits on you, but then I think it's just the knees come down and then your head. Yeah, is, he he lands on his yeah, lower your, half. Your of his head leg. is like precariously under his unders. Kind of yeah. If you yeah. tuck your chin, you do it right. Tuck your chin, but yeah. it looks like it could be nasty. Oh, for sure, yeah. Um, Fun enough match, though, from what I could tell. No, look, man. Anytime you get War Machine and anytime you get Gorillas of Destiny. So this was not this was not an ODQ match as opposed to the night yes. before. Um, and, uh, yeah, Bullet Club ended up going over. Mike Elgin, you know, again, demonstrating lots of feats of strength. Yes. So Did I we talk him. about how incredible his top rope razor's edge on Kenny Omega was night one? Um, we did, but I can talk about it for a lot, incredible. Mo- lot longer. Yeah. Incredible. <sighs> Absolutely incredible. Absolutely terrifying. Yeah, no. Drop a guy in your head. I hate number one, I hate the razor's edge because I feel like that's one of the moves that like if you're in, I hate the I hate the idea of being thrust backwards. That's terrifying. I know. That does not that's not fun. I don't think it'd be fun. No. Especially from the top rope. That's I know, but it looked it looked really impressive. Terrifying. Terrifying. Next up, this was maybe my match of the night. Oh man, but that main no, the main event's so match of the night. But, but this was very good. Anytime you get the Young Bucks and, and Rapongi Vice, uh, Rocky Romero and Trent Beretta in the ring together, it's an it is absolute joy. And they did such a great job of of referencing their previous two matches. Yeah, 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 yeah. A really great job. These guys have had like an amazing series, starting off at Wrestle Kingdom. Mm-hmm. Um, it's 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 such a joy to watch them, and I am I am devastated, man. That Rapongi Vice at the end of this match broke up. I know. Let's go through. Let's go through the match a little bit because there's a couple beats we got to hit high after spot, the match. High spot, high spot, sharpshooter, high spot, high spot. Kind of, but uh, there was some storytelling. No, there was. There totally was. So, I'm like at Dominion, uh, Young Bucks, their strategy was to take Rocky Romero out. So they there was a spot where they power him on the ramp. Right, right, right. Um, worked his back over on the outside of the ring um, to take him out. They won. Well, this time it was Trent's turn. Yeah. To to take some punishment on the back. So uh, Matt Jackson, I believe, mm-hmm. did a similar spot to the mm-hmm. Dominion one with Rocky. Put him in power bomb position, ran him up the ramp. All the way up the ramp. And power bombed him on the ramp. Yeah. I didn't see it because there's two people in front of me, but I heard it. Yeah. And it sounded very painful. Oh, look nasty. Yeah. It was great. Trent always takes one nasty bump per match, he it seems really like. He really does, man. He really does. Um, so Trent was out of action for a while. Yeah. He a very good five minutes. He was very, crawling very back to the ring slowly. His way back to the ring. And at one point, I took a, a selfie. Uh, with big smiling face and him in complete agony, which uh, I posted to our Instagram, and then well, you also put it on Twitter, yeah, and, and then tagged he, him in it, and then he took it uh, and posted it to his own Instagram and left a comment on our Instagram saying, "I'm stealing this and not giving you any credit." That's a fair trade off, there, Trent. At least he told you he was going to do it. I'm okay with that. Yep, because you're in dire straits there. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think he seems like a funny dude. He I, does. I, I think that he maybe get a kick out of it. Yeah, he does. Like he, he more, what's his What's his Twitter avatar? Him outside carrying a pan or something like that. <laughs> he oh, seems like he has a very good sense of humor. He does. Like even this little bit, and I'm pretty sure it's him and Rapongi Vice oh, yeah, talking yeah, yeah, about yeah. we go out drinking and then eat McGriddles in the morning at a Japanese McDonald's. Yeah, <laughs> that's Rapongi. What are you talking about? It's great. It's fantastic. Um, uh, yeah, there was a lot of high spots. Probably too many to actually. Was this the match where they they debuted the uh, the Henry Meltzer driver? Oh, the yeah. Or was, was that the, the one? Outside? Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. was that the one the night before? No, I think that was the second night. Yeah, that be, was during yeah, this match. Yeah, because uh, Meltzer's dad passed dad away. Dad passed that away earlier that day. I think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so they had announced on the Young Bucks announced on Twitter that they were going to debut a new super. Melter driver yeah. in his honor, and so uh, Matt was on the outside mm-hmm. um, with Rocky, and and uh, Nick did like a, like walked up the ropes and did mm-hmm. a flip off there for Melter driver. Yeah, it's pretty impressive. And at that point, from what I understand, the U.S. commentary team, Jr. and and the Josh Barnett, mm-hmm. um, like kind of said, "Oh, it looks like you just got a small piece of it." Luckily. And then, but because somebody did a side by side on Twitter, and then you hear the Japanese announced team, and they're just completely nutting over it. They're going crazy over it. It was awesome. I know. And they should have sold the hell out of it. I know. That's weird. Yeah, it is weird. Um, Why don't they get Kevin Kelly and I don't know. For access, I don't know. Yeah. 
I don't know. Yeah. Um, so anyways, uh, after that, they get uh, the the young bucks were working in both the backs of Rocky and Trent. Yeah. A couple sharpshooter attempts. Mm-hmm. Um, so they get uh, Rocky back in the ring, um, give him another Meltzer driver, put him in the sharpshooter, and then they get Trent in the sharpshooter too. So side by side, both our uh, Rapongi Vice members are in sharpshooters. Rocky taps out. Mm-hmm. Bucks retain the title. Yeah. Great match. Tons of fun. Afterwards, Rocky gets on the mic and well, says... Well, first, no, hold on. First, um, Rocky and Trent are selling oh, yeah. the effects of the sharpshooters. In runs Ricochet. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. Um, gets the bucks out of the ring, does a plonch over the top rope on him, mm-hmm. gets back in the ring, drops a promo saying that uh, himself and Taguchi mm-hmm. want to challenge the young bucks for the junior heavyweight tag team titles. Yeah. Awesome to see ricochet there yeah it's fantastic he he threw a little shade at lucha underground too more than a little bit yeah well he said what did he call them do you use the assholes jerks what did he say i don't remember yeah i forget but anyways he said that they were lame essentially yeah paraphrasing because he he can't be on american television until his contract expires shouldn't have signed a seven-year deal um uh after that rocky trent come back of the ring rocky says you know trent before this match started i said to you if we don't win, you're going to move up to the, you know, they discussed it, I guess. You're going to move up to the heavyweight division and we're going to break up. Mm-hmm. And so they broke up. Yeah. He said it much more eloquently. Yeah. And took the paraphrasing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he said, you know, we had a five year plan when we started this, et cetera, et cetera. So he says, I'm giving and you my He was going blessing. through a checklist of things that they have mm-hmm. accomplished that yeah. was on, in their plan. So, yeah, Trent Brenna looks like he's moving up to the heavyweight division. Yeah. So that'll be interesting. Yeah, that'd be cool. Now there's another belt. So, you know, he can go after the never open weight. Mm-hmm. The U.S. The title. US title the, the intercontinental title. The intercontinental title. And the heavyweight title. And the heavyweight title. Um, so, yeah, it was, you know, man, like, talking about a bummer. It makes me sad. I yeah, I know. I like them They together. seem genuinely emotional, too. Yeah, I know. It's a bummer. So, is you think Rocky's going to be, like, going for the junior heavyweight stuff? I don't know. I don't know either. Interesting. I like them both a lot, so. I know, me too, and they're perfect together. What I the know, heck? I know. Don't break up. You're fine as a tag team. I know. I thought they were going to move up to the heavyweight tag division. I know Rocky's small, but still, like, you could do that. I know. You know, I mean, Kenny was a junior, and then he moved up to the heavyweight. I know, I know. So, anyways. Uh, uh, next, we had a. a boy. Yeah. This is a comedy match. Here. But it was hilarious and tons of fun. Bad Luck Fale, Cody, Marty Skrull, and Takahashi taking on Okada, Will Ospreay, and the Briscoe Brothers. You mentioned this. You mentioned this. Have you ever seen Okada having as much fun? No. He was on, having an absolute blast. On both nights, but then getting to, you know, take, like I say, the night off, but getting to be goofy on night two. He was kind of dancing when the crowd was chanting, Osprey, 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 Osprey. <laughs> he was. He was making these hilarious facial expressions. He was like, you know, kind of overacting a little bit. A little bit. He was having an absolute blast. That was so much fun. In Japan, when he comes down the ramp towards the ring, he doesn't high five people walking down the ring, does he? Walking no. down to the ring. He's got like eight robes on. I, I know, but he was he doing that. He was doing that night too. Oh, okay. That's what I'm yeah. saying. That's what I mean. No, he, you're right. I think I got a hand. Yeah, I yeah, got I did. High, yeah, yeah, we got, got a high five from, 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 from Okada. Oh, man. That's crazy. Um, the beginning of this match uh, saw everybody in the Bullet Club tag each other in like three or four times. Yeah. Yeah, Cody started. He tagged in Marty. Oh, because Jay Briscoe was in there. Yeah. And and yeah, Briscoe was saying, I want Cody. Cody tagged in Marty. Marty comes in. Marty's about to throw down, goes back, tags Cody. Uh, the crowd starts chanting for uh, the Tokyo Pimp. So Cody tags him in. Tokyo Pimp comes in, goes back out. Crowd starts popping for Fale. Yeah. He tags him in. Fale comes in. Fale leaves. <laughs> All before any action actually happens. It was fantastic. It was hilarious. <laughs> it was so much fun. The greatest bit was the punchline, and that was they do this so much before anybody throws a blow that you hear five minutes. Oh, I know. And then Will Ospreay goes to the crowd, grabs oh, somebody's yeah, grabs beer, a beer, starts looking at his wrist like it's a watch, yeah, and gets on the apron and chugs the beer. Yeah. It was tons of fun. That, it felt very PWG-ish. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. Eventually, some actually fu- some actual fighting happened. Yeah. Um, there was a cool spot where uh, Ospreay was going for his finisher, the cutter, the springboard cutter. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cody gives him a, a disaster kick yeah. in midair, and then he gets the crossroads for the win. Yeah. So that was cool. 
That was really cool. Yeah, it was, was just a really fun match. There was that spot where uh, Tokyo Pimp was doing his dance, mm -hmm. and then he tagged someone. I think he tagged in Marty. Mm -hmm. So Marty did it. Cody did it. And then finally, uh, they t uh, tagged in Fale, mm -hmm. and he was teasing to do it, and then he just sat on, I think yeah. it was one of the Briscoes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was, was all really fun. good stuff. That was a lot of fun. Um, next up, we had, woo! You know, man. Well, you know what? It, it went just about as well as we expected. I'll be completely honest with you. It was actually worse than I expected. Really? I thought there was going to be like an actual. So this was a Tanahashi uh, versus Billy Gunn. Yes, for the Intercontinental title. So, I mean, kind of across the board, everybody was thinking, why is why are they going to? I'm not looking at crap on Billy Gunn. Um, but again, when you're showcasing, like basically you're John Cena, mm -hmm. Tanahashi. Mm -hmm. When you're showcasing the Intercontinental Championship, by the way, that re. Uh, the, it's a new belt. Yeah, that's a new belt. Looks amazing. Yeah. Um, when you're showcasing him in your, I guess, co-main event, your you know second yeah. to last match, you you maybe want to book this with somebody who is a for one thing known best for being a part of New Japan, mm -hmm. and b somebody you can put on a good match with. Yeah, Tanahashi's injured. I know that he's got a bum bicep. Yeah. But this match was just. Gr just grindingly slow. Yes. Just, it was, it's, I swear it just started out with rest holds, led to more rest holds on the outside and then finished. And then we got to see some boot, some, some booty. Yeah. Some butts. Yeah. Billy Gunn showed a little of his butt and then Tanahashi showed his ex entire, Tanahashi showed his entire butt. Correct. That was pretty funny, but it wasn't really like a comedy match. No. Um. So yeah, I mean, look, man, Billy Gunn's old. I'm glad that he still has a career in New yeah. Japan. Yeah. Um, it's just this. He would have been more in place in the opening tag match. Yeah, totally. And yeah. Why not have Naito Tanahashi a rematch need, for yeah. the Intercontinental title or something like that? Dude, you don't even have to go that far. I, and you're right. You're right. But, you know, Michael Elgin versus Tanahashi. I don't mm -hmm. know. You, any number of mm -hmm. people. You know, it didn't even have to be a title match. I don't know. It's just, again, when you're presenting something, trying to get an audience based on, hey, this is, a you know, an alternate. And, you know, uh, it's. It's something different that you haven't seen before. Yeah. Come check it out. You flip it on. He's fighting Billy Gunn. Yeah. It's not the best. No, I know. You know, it's not the best. And, and by and large, they did a fantastic job of booking these shows. Oh, yeah, dude. I mean, Absolutely it's, fantastic it, job. It is, it is really sort of. If that's their lone kind of stumble. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Um, but so yeah, anyways, Tanahashi yeah. went over with uh, high, fly, fl high Fly Flow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Pretty <laughs> time wise, pretty quick, but it felt like a long time. It felt like a very long time. Uh, next up, we had the main event, which was Kenny Omega versus Ishii for the United States. Now, let me ask you something. When Ishii beat Naito in night one, um, did you think it was pretty much a shoe in that he was going to reach it to the finals? Because I did. Yeah. At, at that point, I almost kind of thought that he was going to win. That he had a decent enough shot at winning. Yeah. Even going into this, I was like. He has a very decent shot yeah. of winning this. Entire Especially, thing. In, it makes sense in hindsight that he would face Omega in the finals, given their history so far this yeah. year. But then closing on a, on an English language, pro, on your best English language promo guy, that makes total sense. So, yeah, I mean that was kind of telegraphed. But um, you know these guys have a history. Yep, putting on great matches, and this one was fantastic. And this one was right up there with it. Easily uh, the the most brutal non hardcore match I've ever seen. Yeah. To some of the spots, like all <sighs> Kenny Omega gets a lot of credit for doing a lot of things well. He might be, he might deliver one of the best chops in the business. Oh, yeah, 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 because they are thunderous. Yeah, and if you look at Ishii's chest by the end of the match, there's some muscle behind him, mm -hmm. just a huge patch of red across the chest mm -hmm. with welts and blood coming up. Yeah, from the, the dozens of chops that both of them exchanged. Yeah. Um, I don't remember exactly how many knees Ishii took during the match. I want to say lot. at least a dozen. It was a lot. And, and when you see those up close and personal, it's like, oh, my God. I don't care how much padding there is in his, in his knee pad. It's all about because Kenny knows where to hit. Yeah, I know. Yeah. He hits them right here. Yeah, yeah. But totally. because they're so fast, yeah. it looks like he's hitting, hitting them right here with the, at his jaw joint. Yeah. It is rough. There's a fantastic table spot that everybody marked out for, and I didn't even understand until a little bit later. Yeah, you had to look at the but, monitor behind us to see <laughs> yeah. it. Uh, but the Bucks came out with Kenny. They took out a table halfway through the match. Well, Kenny was faking a knee injury. Mm -hmm, right, right. So right. the ref was distracted. Yeah. So they pull out a table. 
they set up the table so that it's sort of uh, 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 parallel with the ramp. Yeah, perpendicular to the ring. Perpendicular to the ring. Yeah, thank you. Um, and so it was just sort of sitting there. So uh, Kenny at one point is able to, he's trying to uh, get a belly to back suplex and get Ishii through the table. It wasn't working so because Ishii was holding on to the ropes with his right. hand. So Kenny went for a dragon suplex. So Ishii's arms were kind of trapped so mm-hmm. he couldn't do it. So he couldn't hold on. So Ishii holds on the ropes with his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> and we're behind them, like you know, their their backs are facing us. So, so I'm literally sitting there, like, like it's in the back of my head, like, what is he holding on see, to? I thought that too. So I turned to look to see if he was on the monitor okay, behind us, okay, and I saw him yeah. holding on him with his teeth. Okay, yeah. And next, that, next time, tap me on the shoulder and say, "Look." Okay. Because that was like I was too wrapped up in the drama. Of the yeah, match. no, I was I was kind of confused, but also like I don't know, it was probably something I don't know. I, I had no idea. I didn't know. Yeah. I just thought maybe just through his own core power, you know, he yeah, was yeah, just yeah. doing that. But uh, that was fantastic because the crowd was super popping. For yeah, him. and then eventually Kenny got him through the table. Mm-hmm, yeah. Both of us land like right at her feet, basically. Oh, it was fantastic. It was stiff. That was um, great. Uh, both uh, competitors did each other's finishers, mm-hmm. but couldn't get the pin with them. Yeah, just great storytelling, a great intense. Yeah, match. when the Ishii, crowd when was Ishii, super into it, when Ishii hit the one wing name. Oh man, if they if that been the finish, popped. If that had been the finish, then no one had been disappointed. Exactly, everybody popped massive, uh, because again, it echoes. I mean, dude, if if Gato really is the one booking all this, yeah. I mean, I imagine he has a committee of some sort, mm-hmm. but it, to me, it, it sounds like it's like a David Milch thing writing session. You know, like he's just sitting there. And everybody else is chuck, chucking in ideas, and they booked the best show. Because over two nights, you had themes. You had... You had stories continuing from night one to night two. Exactly. Yeah. You had consequences. You had you know, you know, had setup, and you had execution. Yeah. You had this complete show that all made sense. But individually, the matches told their own stories as well. Yep. I mean, it's it's absolutely masterful booking. I, mean, I went back to uh, uh, the... You know, just going back to the lethal match Omega had. Um, even then, he was selling a knee injury. Mm-hmm, yeah, and then he was kind of selling it throughout the Ishi match. When the Bucks were setting the table, he was really selling it. Mm-hmm. And as soon as that table was set up, he got up and did a lap around the ring. Yeah, saying I'm fine. Yeah, exactly. And just that kind of foreshadowing. Ishi's arm from day one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or sorry, day two again, again against uh, 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 Saber. Mm-hmm. It's just it's just really good stuff. Yeah. Oh, and even going back to uh, the uh, the Ishi Naito match. I mean, the story there was was a Naito, you know, kind of taking Ishi lightly. Mm-hmm. Being really arrogant about things, but Ishii being able to overpower Naito. Mm-hmm. One of the very first things Kenny Omega did was try to uh, outmuscle yeah, Ishii. Yeah, exactly. And you see these different stories and how they kind of interweave these narrative threads. And I mean, I think that's why New Japan is probably a more satisfying watch mm-hmm. than WWE is right now. Yeah, it's the thing. It's the thing that's unique about pro wrestling. Mm-hmm. That's the thing about it is that you can and you they can, just they really sorry they, and they really distill it to its essence. Yeah, you can try to replicate. You know, WWE sometimes they try to replicate sitcoms. Yeah, they try to replicate hour-long you know, dramas. Hour-long dramas, exactly. New Japan. That's the thing about it is that it doesn't. It takes what's what it takes the strengths that pro wrestling as an art form has to offer, and that's what it gives you. Yeah, that's what it plays off of. Yeah. Whereas the WWE, that mainly comes in secondary to what they want to write the personalities. I would and, almost think that's like their third priority. Yeah. Yeah. Especially on weekly television. Yeah. I'm not to say there's not good matches on television, but. Yeah, we're not looking at crap all over the WWE. No. But, you know, this is in terms of like in ring storytelling and storytelling through booking, it doesn't get better in New Japan, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Kenny Omega did end up going over. Um, and he cut, a, he cut a face promo at the end. He said, you know, I've had a really difficult year. He said, but I'm just human. We're all just humans, just like everybody here, and we're all special. Yeah. Oh, that's the best. Yeah. And then Bullet Club stood proudly in the ring, oh, hoisting Kenny up. Hold on. First, Cody comes in. Oh, that was good. Yeah. Grabs the belt from Kenny. Yeah. As if to ruin Kenny's moment. Mm-hmm. And uh, instead, they mend fences. Yeah. Um, get on the same page. Kenny says, right now, it's over. It's over. It's all the beef. With, I'm yeah. guessing it's not really over. Probably not. the moment, over. Yeah. After that moment. Unified Bullet Club. Mm-hmm, yeah. They pose in the ring. And then up at the top of the ramp. Yep. Yeah. It was all good Streamers stuff. came flying down. I got a lot of two sweets from people. It was awesome. It's good for you. I'm happy for you. You should be. You got a two sweet from Kenny Omega. Mm-mm. So you slipped it in there. We're you didn't find, see it. We're going to find footage. There's if there no was anybody, evidence. If there was anybody who was standing front row or second row who got video footage of Kenny Omega walking to the ring, 
um, if you were front row and the entrance was to the left of you, yeah, then you might have got it. So be on the lookout for it because that's going to be proof positive. Anyways, that's it for our New Japan Night 2 recap. Let us know what you guys thought in the comments. And until next time, we'll talk to you guys later. Thank you. Bye.